Hello, welcome back. In the last video, we discussed the importance of analysis and also we saw there are three kinds of post-test analysis that we can do. One is behavior matrix, response time and resource uses. And these are the three minimum default analysis that you can do using load runner analyzer. However, you can add more analysis which you are going to see in the very end of this chapter. Right. So having said that, let's now take a look at the analysis tool. So this is the, the scenario. Recall that I have configured the result setting so that I can store the result in chapter 7 results 50 underscore user percentage mode. Okay. So that means once the test is over, the results are stored in this directory and the result name is res. So now I am going to go to chapter 7 results and then this is 50 user percentage mode. So let's go there under res. So this is the result file. Notice that result, result directory consists of almost 5 MB of data. So for 30 minutes of uh, for 30 minutes of runtime, we almost collected 5 MB of data and those raw data are all available here in this directory. And you will see there will be a file called res.lrr. So lrr is load runner analysis file. Okay. So you click on res.lrr. So this res.lrr file is going to open in a tool and that tool is called load runner analysis. So and this is whatever you are right now working is called a session. Okay. So from the default data, whatever we collected, we can um, basically start a session and here we can modify new data. So that's what I'm going to show you. So look, this is called session explorer, this part. And by default, load runner is analysis is going to come up with certain graphs. Okay. And also a nice summary report reporting what kind of number of users that we ran and different statistics about the throughput and total hits per second, average hits per second and if error, there is if, if there is any error, those kind of things. And then this is the important thing called transaction summary. So here it will show you what are the transactions that we did. We have done browse lesson, taking quiz, submitting an assignment, participating in a discussion and updating a glossary and this table shows you what is the average minimum and maximum and standard deviation and also 90th percentile which is I will tell you in the next two videos I'm going to explain you what is 90th percentile and why we should look at 90th percentile and also it's going to show you if there is any transaction which are, which are failed, passed or stopped. Right. So this table is very important because this is a table by looking at this table we can we can infer different things. Right. So this is what uh, this thing. So by default I recall that I told you that we do three kinds of analysis V user, response time, resource uses. Right now by default so by right now by default we have a graph on V users and also we have a graph on transaction summary and average transaction response time. So these are belongs to response time category. And also we have something called throughput and hits per second. These are not really belongs to the resource utilization. Rather these things belong to the web tier. Okay. So and web, web analysis is something uh, optional. You know it's not really like you know, you have to you have to do it every time. But whenever you are running a web application, then these things make sense. So here, for example, you want to see. Let's say, let's take a look at transaction summary. In transaction summary, it is giving me, you know, graphically, like you know, how the transactions are spread over. And and recall that in our workload, we specify about 45 percentage of transactions are lessons. So that is why lessons are the highest number of uh, transaction. Right, so that makes sense. So basically, by looking at this graph, you can say that if 
the transaction mix that you are you you decided is working or not okay so this is going to give you the transaction summary and then is another response and, and this graph is going to give you what is the average response time with the elapsed time okay and notice that there's something is going wrong here okay I don't know and that is what you need to figure out now why all of us all of a sudden we are getting a spike here and another thing that you can notice the response time per browse lesson is higher than other transactions and you have to always go back and drill down and see why these things are happening and also notice here that you can right click here and go to properties in properties what I want to do I want to see what is happening like say if you run the V you see the V user actually at time 2 minute 8 second I have all for 50 users running so when I want to see the response time I like to see what is the steady state response time okay so that means I need to ignore all these things you know all like anything that is happening from 0 to say 3 seconds 3 minutes I want to ignore that okay so to do that what you can do you can something called a filter okay so you can you can click the filter and here you can put the scenario elapsed time double click here then you can set a range here let's say you are you you are worried about what is happening in the in the response time starting from 0 3 to let's say up to 30 because after 30, 30 minutes maybe some test started to uh, stop right and if you do this say so okay then it is going to going to give you the average and all those things it will calculate from a from time 3 to 29.52 so all those data are there but it, but in this view you just seeing only the window that you have specified okay and that is you have to do by right clicking go to the properties and then making a proper filter and you can have other filters also like remember in the script we have we had some think time okay so that means if we have a web URL method let's say we have something called web URL and then we have some you know some parameters right and then we are trying to measure the response time we, we want to measure how long does this uh, API took that means how much whatever this web URL is going to going to finally going to send a request right so how much time this request took so therefore what you do you generally you create it you start a transaction and you end the transaction and whatever the time difference that we measure so what happens if between the LR start and LR end let's say there is a LR underscore think time that means you are waiting for some time let's say five second okay so in that case the transaction that is going to be referred that is given by load runner is going to be transaction actually the, the amount of time this web URL function took plus the five second that you have so so, so essentially we do, when you want to measure that measure the response time you do not really want to include that uh, thing time okay and that is what actually happened that if we go here so if we go here you by default it is the, the think time is not included however you can also include the think time okay and also if you just want to know what are the transaction response time for only the past transaction not all transaction you know the failed transaction may not have any data okay so therefore you can also give this kind of things and also you can give like you know, if you want to if you want to record like you know how much time how much time is taking for, for the V user 1 to 10 like you know basically what happens that you know this in, in, in the result store in the, in the in the result database we have we have keeping track of all those things like say for example user number 1 and user number 1 is take you know we're doing 50 transactions say transaction 1 2 3 4 up to 50 and how long does it take for each transaction we are keeping track of all these things and then in this analysis tool we can basically you know by default we are taking we, we are we are accumulating all the data and showing you 
but however they have given you all such filters so that you can change and see the individual transaction time say for example you want to see how the v user id 1 is performing right and let's say you give the v user 10 okay and okay and let's see what's going on so this is what is a view user 10 so view user 10 is doing mostly discussion and lessons okay and this is the response time for view user 10 another thing that you can notice that you can also find out the raw data actually what is you know what kind of uh, let me show you the raw data for this for this thing okay so these are the raw data and in this raw data so view user 10 right has done all these transactions okay and then if you go here it will give you the scenario elapsed time okay so at what time this transaction occurred so the raw data is going to be shown here and here is the plot for that okay so you can basically like you know, if you do not like this kind of graph then you can basically export these graphs to your excel set and then you can create your own custom graph and also there are there are a lot more graphs are available you can go here and then add new graph and then you can go to say as i told you right there are different kinds of graph that we we, we can do v user transaction system resources and also in addition to that is providing you web page diagnostic web resources error like you know web resources like you know what is the throughput and all those things okay so so this is how like you know you can you can keep adding you know different you know different graphs so here's a question for you why do you think that the browse lesson is taking more time okay so look at the script look at other data that you have here okay and can you conclude why we are seeing in case of browse lesson you know, the response time is higher much more higher compared to other stuff like say for example this glossary is taking almost on an average 7.187 whereas the lesson is taking 16 if you compare it it's almost twice can you tell me why this thing happening by looking at by by looking at this in the data and 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 conclude something thank you